people, remember this day in which ye came out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by the strength of the hand of the Lord brought you out of this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. Brothers and sisters, here our brother Moses is telling the people, listen, you need to remember what God did for you. Next verse it says, And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by the strength of the hand of Jehovah brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. And Moses said to the people, Remember to observe this day on which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage and slavery, for by the strong and powerful hand of the Lord brought you out of this place. Now, brothers and sisters, you see how this verse, and I looked at uh, several versions of it, it brings us back to remembering what God did for us. And you know, Jesus Christ is our gift. He's the one that God chose to come here on earth and died on the cross for us. And believe it or not, many people don't even thank him for that. Many people think that this is something they deserve. And what's worse of all is people think that they could actually buy this gift. And this is not something, brothers and sisters, that can be bought. It's a gift from God. And we need to appreciate what God did for us by remembering and giving thanks to Him. You know, I think that's very important for us to maintain our heart pure is to be grateful to God. Brother Lewis mentioned such an importance to the Christian life of living with gratitude because gratitude allows us to see that the world does not center, the world does not revolve around us, and that we would not be where we are today unless it be by the providence of God. God is good, brothers and sisters. And the Bible tells us that He works all things together for good for those that love Him. Romans 8.28 For those that love Him. Therefore, the greatest thing that we can do is to love God. And the only way to, to, to love Him is by getting to know Him. Because God is so good that when we begin to know who He is, we can't help but our hearts be drawn more to Him. It's such a great desire for us to know God that Moses, when... They were in the desert, and he tells God, God, if if you do not go with us, do not take us up from here. And he also had this incredible desire to see God. And brothers and sisters, you and me as New Testament Christians have been brought into a greater covenant, a better covenant than the one that he had made in the Old Testament. We're not just called servants of God, we're called children of God children of God. He is your father. And he promises that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And Jesus showing up on the earth, coming as being born into the world as a baby is a testament to the promises of God that cannot be broken. Yes, you know, you may be going through some difficult time right now yes you've been waiting for a while yes you may start you may be starting to become desperate but whatever you do do not stop trusting in god do not stop trusting in his promises the bible says that the only way that we can please god is through faith there's nothing you can do to please god unless it is involved with faith Bible says if without faith, it is impossible, impossible to please God. You can go out and do th nice things for people. You can become a, a philanthropist. But unless your faith is upon God, is upon Jesus, it is worthless in the eternal value of it. 
may not be worthless for the person that you're doing something for, but eternally, within the scope of all existence, it is worthless. Because the Bible says, "What for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world but lose his soul? It will not profit him anything. If this is your first time listening to a Christian broadcast, and you say, I, I want to know God. I want to experience this relationship. I want Jesus to be my Savior, my Deliverer. You can put your trust in Him today. You can cry out to God. You can say, Father, I come before you today and I believe that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. I believe that He paid for my sins at the cross. I confess that I am a sinner and I am in need of Jesus' payment for my sin, because I can't do it. I believe that he died and that he resurrected on the third day, and because he resurrected, we are now eligible for the gift of your Holy Spirit. And I pray that your Holy Spirit will come to live in me now and make me a new creature, a new creation. I trust in you today, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the things, brothers and sisters, that uh, we could be assured of is if we love God, we also love his son. And we also are going to love what his son did for us and be grateful. And this is something that uh, Moses taught. And this is something that we read throughout the Bible, that we are to be thankful. You see that our brother John here is stating how thankful he is how much he loved God for what he did for him. And this is something, brothers and sisters, that we should be eager to have that love and that passion for our God and our Savior. And when, when we're eager that we love God with all our heart, with all our mind, then we'll be willing, not because somebody pushes you, not because somebody tells you, but because you want to. That's how much you love him to carry out his commandments. See, Jesus didn't do what God told him because it was a burden on him. He did it because he loved the Father. How much do you love the Father? How much does God mean to you? How much value does that salvation, that pain, the hurt, that life that was nailed to that cross mean to you? You know, one of the biggest problems we have, brothers and sisters, is when we think of the cross, we think of it like a movie, like something that it really didn't happen. But when we start believing, and that's why the key word was believe, and understand that this thing really took place, and it was all to save your soul, then, and only then, is this going to become a reality to you. Father God, tonight, Father, we thank you for giving us your son, your gift, to set us free, Father, from bondage and from an eternal prison that we deserve, yet you were merciful, Father. And for that, we thank you tonight, Lord, and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we thank you for listening tonight. We invite you to visit our webpage, redemptionandpower.com. Uh, you can also uh, find us on iTunes where you can subscribe to be able to get automatic downloads of our podcast. You can, down you can also download the app, the Radio Redemption and Power app, both on Apple Store and Android, uh, the Google Play Store. And you can also write to us at redemptionandpower at gmail.com. We thank you again for listening. We pray that the Lord bless you. Every day the world is becoming darker and darker. Soon the Son of Man shall appear in glory and power, and the nation shall mourn with the sight of his coming. Are you ready for the return of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? As the armies of darkness march towards global domination, many slumber as we approach the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us awake and announce His kingdom. Blow the trumpet.
trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. You are listening to Radio Redemption. And power! And power! Power! For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. 1 Corinthians 4.20 Despised and rejected A man whom we did not esteem A man of many sorrows A man acquainted with grief When he came to his own His very own did not receive This man of lowly birth 